called Windows Operational Readiness as well. And uh, where the, the tool aims to provide them a convenient way to run the performance, uh, to, to, to run the Windows Operational Readiness test. So we are going to go through it. Go through it. And this tool can also be run as a Thunderbolt plugin. So I mean, will tell us more like how we can run that. And this project has already been integrated with other upstream projects as well. So I mean, will tell us a little bit more about the usage of this project. Uh, and finally, this project is still a work in progress, so uh, we want to bring, bring more attention from the community, and um, we would like to see people start uh, collaborating on this. The goal, of, the goal of this talk is to um, the goal of this talk is to uh, introduce the Windows, the idea of Windows operational readiness, and. Um, attract more uh, people like we're very well very well going to onboard and anyone who is interested in this project start their contribution to the upstream uh, okay so um, the first question here is what is conformance test so imagine you as a kubernetes vendor and let's say um you want to ship a product to your customer that help customer to create kubernetes one twenty five cluster so how do you verify the, the project, the cluster created by your project, support all the required APIs in Kubernetes 125? Does the pod to pod connection work? Uh, can user mount volume to their pod? And um, also if you imagine yourself as a Kubernetes developer, how do you know that the feature you are about to add to, work 20, to 125 or works, well all the, or works well with all the existing features there? And if you are like troubleshoot the cluster, how do you know that, uh, how do you systematically figure out what works and what doesn't work? So the answers to all the questions here is that if we have a sweep of tasks that track all the steps of a Kubernetes cluster, including the API machinery, apps, nodes, network, storage, like just like all the extracts, then if your cluster can pass the test there and you can confident, confidently say that the cluster is a valid Kubernetes cluster. It's ready to use. Um, and um, so this suite of tasks is called conformance test. So in this case, we have the official conformance test def uh, defined by CNCF. And um, so if you explore the upstream Kubernetes test conformance folder, you will find a YAML file called conformance.yaml. And there are about 350 test cases listed there. And when you explore the, and the implementation of all the test cases there is in the upstream Kubernetes repo. So when you explore the uh, Kubernetes into the test into your repo and you find a single test with conformance tag, and you will know that this test belongs to the latest conformance. Um, so uh, each provider is in to submit their test result uh, to prove that the cluster is work as it be is uh, the cluster's behavior is as expected. However, there's no uh, Windows conformance test right now. Um, so uh, today, in, in the CAP 2578, we want to uh, introduce a way to test your cluster. It's still important to verify the behavior of the cluster. And, um, but there's one thing that actually is still not an official CNCF test yet. But here's come the first question is, what is the Windows Kubernetes cluster? It means um, it support running containers in the class, uh, in running containers on its Windows OS. Let's say if we have a cluster and you can use Linux OS as the control plane node OS and use the, and use the Windows OS in the, like the rest part of your worker node or all of your worker nodes. 
So if we take a look at the history of Windows testing, we, we, we can see that the first version was created in 2018, and it's called uh, Windows Note Support. There was a discussion towards the and uh, Jay and, uh, and uh, other folks from SIG Windows and SIG testing uh, brought the time to define the Windows operational level, which is the one that we are talking about today. Um, so in this talk, we're going to be talking the minimum Windows uh, CPU required to be required to test in order for the cluster to be, done, to be considered uh, operational. And High level idea, there are nine categories in this cap. So the first four categories are the required because they're testing the basic functionalities of the cluster. So um, for example, if you cannot create the, uh, let's say, uh, cluster IP type of service in your cluster, it's really hard to consider this as a ready to use one. So the first four are required for all the clusters. So the next five categories because they rely on the functionalities that have, have to rely on the functionality that reside outside Kubernetes purview, such as CNS, CRS, um, Windows Server Edition and configurations. And for example, if you want to run the Active Directory test, you, uh, you need to like set up your AD server first and then um, create a domain, create, group, create a group managed service account and join the node to the domain or set up the uh, security context for the node for the pod to access the resources in the domain. So, the, uh, so after all this setup, you can run this test to see if the, you set, you do that correctly. But this kind of setup is not required for all the clusters. So it's so the, the test itself doesn't require for all the clusters as well. Here's an example of what we included in the uh, net in the network category in this cap. So and in this cap, we can find the functionalities we want to test for each categories. And next thing we want to do is to match the functionality we want to test here with its upstream implement implementation. Um, so here is a quick summary of the difference between the Linux performance and Windows operational readiness. official, but the Windows operational readiness is defined by CAP 2578, which is not the official one. And the implementation of all the tasks listed by both tasks lives in the upstream Kubernetes repo. And the official way to run the Linux conformance is by run by user front board. And the documented way to run the Windows operational readiness is by using the Windows operational readiness tool, which is Um, so the input of this project is the YAML file called test.yaml or test cases Here we import all the functionalities we want to, uh, we mentioned in a cap into this YAML file. And um, so you can like just comment out the one that you are not interested and leave what you want to test in this YAML file to like uh, to customize what you want to run. And the tool will first pull, uh, parse this YAML file and generate the correct command to trigger the upstream E2E test binary. Um, the E2E test binary is received from the upstream Kubernetes repo. So um, the tool can automatically detect what version of Kubernetes you are using and download the pre-compiled um, test, uh, pre-compiled binary from upstream. But you can also set up an environment variable called Kubernetes hash, points to any upstream commit shell you want to use. So by doing this, um, the tool will first pull down the upstream Kubernetes repo and check out to your commit and build this E2E test binary from there. So this means that you can use like any versions you want to, to test your cluster. And finally, the, uh, the report will be generated by uh, GUnit. Here, um, we add all the 
task, all, all the functionalities we want to add here. And for each task case, it belongs to one of the nine categories I mentioned before. So um, the description here uh, tells us what functionality we want to test for this task case. Uh, and the focus and skip are the same with Jinko focus and Jinko skip. So here we match the functionality with its upstream implementation. So let's take the first test case for example. If we want to test the ability to access Windows container IP by port IP, we want to run the upstream Jinko test. It should have stable network for Linux and Windows pod. And um, also here we can find the existing um, implementation of the functionality, but sometimes the task is missing in the upstream. So if that happens, we uh, add new E2E task case to the upstream Kubernetes folder directly. And um, in the top of this file, there's a Kubernetes version which tells us uh, which, version are, which Kubernetes version are we testing. So let's say if you, you want to run the Active Directory test and it started support by Kubernetes since 118, but if your cluster is on 117, it doesn't really make sense to run that test against the cluster, right? Because it's not supported yet. So that's the reason why we have the Kubernetes version here. Um, so this is an example of running the of Redis binary directly. Um, the categories here is the, uh, like you can define one or more categories you wanna run. So for example, here we define categories equals to core network and extend active directory. So that all the task cases from these two categories will be triggered. And, um, so here, this is the, um, the E2E test binary is called internally, and the Windows parameters are set by default, so we know that you are running on the Windows cluster. And here's the code base of how we generated the command to trigger the E2E test binary. Um, and this is what the result looks like. So if you define the, the report there or the artifacts environment variable, the result will be um, stored in those folders and it can be parsed by the dashboard. So this tool can also be run like the hand one talking, and I will hand over to Amin from here. Thank you. So yeah, uh, starting as a Sonoboy plugin, you can use this inside the cluster and run the Windows operational redness inside the cluster instead of running this uh, as a, an, an outside software. Uh, for those who don't know, Sonoboy is the standard tool for running and submitting the conformance tests for Linux. So it totally makes sense to bring this to our project and make this the default for the Windows operational readiness as well. Besides running this in the cluster, you can have tools for run, uh, for parsing and extracting the results and giving you the summary of the results you, you just run your cluster. We're gonna see in the next slide. So to run the operational redness via Sonoboy, it's super simple. We have a Sonoboy plugin YAML file where you can edit, you can uh, define the specification, follow the specification for a Sonoboy plugin. So you can do the same way as you do running this in the CLI. You pass like the E2E binary, the path, you pass the core network, the category that you want, whatever you want. If you don't want to run a, run a particular category, you just remove all the categories and this one of them. Um, so one thing that was super cool that uh, Mark helped us to, to do is publish this on the G, G, GCR bucket upstream. So every time you merge this on, on master on main, you can have one version of the latest OCI, OCI uh, image of the project. So you can use this on a Sonoboy, Sonoboy on your own path or any, any, anywhere you want to run the, the image of the project. The Docker file is in the root as well. Uh, super simple to use and, and start and getting started. So we have a few main targets in the project that will have to help you and simplify the, the streamlined experience you have with the, with the system. So you can run make Sonoboy plugin. Uh, this will start the Sonoboy. I think at this point this will wait for the results. You have dash dash wait zero. So it, it will wait to run the, the job, the conformance plugins, extract the results, and, and dump this, uh, 
uh, inside the Sonoboy, so you can run make Sonoboy results. This will read the, the results and output it for you. So in the, the example here, one of the network policies test fail, it will print out what test fail in the, in the screenshot at the bottom and give you like some percentages, some information of the state of your uh, cluster at the time it was running. Uh, it's super simple, super easy to run, and, and we have uh, a few market targets, uh, make file targets to help you on that. Uh, yeah, so we start to explore it, a few usages of this project already, some cool stuff are going on. Uh, the first one, uh, and this is like in the developer side, you can use the Windows Dev tools to bootstrap your own cluster. It's super easy to bootstrap it. Uh, you, you don't need a cloud. Uh, you just run this locally. You need a good machine to, to run that, but that's fine. You just need VirtualBox, Vagrant, everything's open source, everything, everything is fine for a personal use. Uh, in the project, you just run make, and you can run the Windows Operational Redness tool inside your own local virtual uh, system, you know, your, your Windows cluster. Um, so advancing a little bit in the use case, we have like uh, integration of the pro jobs. You can, uh, when you do a commit in the project, you can run slash test, operational test, cap Z. This will bring up a cap Z cluster for you with Windows 2019 and we we'll run all the tests uh, in the system and you, we will output this for you. So we integrated the pro jobs uh, with our project and we can run our project as a custom job of pro and this will bring up the results of, the, of our changes of what uh, you are developing at the moment for you in pro. So we have a few capy folks here. They won't let me lie so <laughs> a little bit of usage on the cap side. Uh, we at VMware use CapV. Uh, so CapE allows you to bring up a new cluster, a, a new workload cluster in the hybrid view or Windows view as well. So one way to use that, like you, it, it, it brings you a brain or master cluster that we call management cluster. And this management cluster will bootstrap new uh, workload clusters for you. So you can have hybrid OS or you can have a Linux only or Windows only. And this is like a production ready uh, way to run your, uh, your cluster in the cloud uh, or on-prem. Uh, one of the features, uh, there are a good uh, sessions about this, this uh, runtime extensions, cluster class, and things like that around uh, KubeCon this year. But one of the features that we started to explore for this project was the usage of cluster class and runtime extensions. So you can ha have like these hooks inside the life cycle of your cluster. And in the middle of one of uh, these phases of your cluster, you can execute a command or, or do uh, some operation called like uh, these web hooks uh, that you just created. Uh, so in the folder exp, it's possible to explore one of these uh, systems that we developed, one of these hooks that we developed, and this will call Sonoboy as soon as your control plane is ready. So your control, control plan gets ready and it, it will automatically run the operational test for you. So this is super cool because you can validate your new clusters as soon as they are created with uh, new extensions and new uh, bootstrap of, uh, uh, of this test at each creation. Uh, yeah, so to wrap up here, uh, I have some special shootouts. Uh, first is Jay Vias from VMware from my team for all the mentoring and leadership on, on all these projects and, and SIG Windows. Uh, Mark Hosseri and James Stubert here uh, mentoring and the guidance on Windows and Kubernetes. They help us a lot in all these parts of the projects and uh, understanding how Windows works on Kubernetes. Aravin, Claudio, Luther, and Douglas for working on new Windows features and always ready to help the community. So uh, there are more folks inside the SIG Windows and all of them help it to create the cap, to bring out review and, and are authors of the, this cap as well. 
uh, Adelina and Ben, the, the elder, for the early discussions in this topic. They started uh, the conversation. It was Adelina that started the, the thread, and everything started to, to move on. And finally, Antonio Ojea for the networking HV test review and uh, moving forward with that. Hello, so how to contribute to the project? So if you are interested in help, uh, move Windows forward, test Windows, that's super cool. That's, there is a lot of challenges, a lot of work to do in this area. So right now we have 40% of the tests implemented on the lists that we defined in the cab, a round of that. Uh, I hope I open one t one ticket for each one of the missing tests. If you are interested, uh, go ahead, check the project. It's in Kubernetes 6, Windows Operational Redness. You can get one area that you are interested, get Windows Dev 2 to bootstrap your first cluster, go to Azure, go to AWS, uh, go to vSphere, and bring your, your cluster there, uh, check, test your stuff. We are here to help, we are here to, uh, help anyone new to onboard and uh, start to code with us on, on the project. Uh, join us on SIG Windows, Kubernetes is Slack as well. And thank you. <laughs> I think you have a QA session. Thanks for the, I noticed there was a slide where there were tests for Windows Server 2019, and I was wondering if there are plans for Windows Server 2022. Say that again, sorry. I noticed there was a slide on uh, Windows Server 2019 testing, and I was wondering if there was gonna be testing for Windows Server 2022. Yeah, I think we, ha we have something, roadmap, uh, uh, James uh, uh, and Mark, uh, we are going to, Talk on next. You you what's next on Sig Windows uh, in in two hours. So uh, basically, what we we have tested here is 2019. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's in the roadmap for the project as well. So if you find like any. Uh, Task is that is worth adding here. Thanks, folks.